And I was wondering if you could comment on, do you think artificial intelligence can become conscious? Well, the short answer is no. I think artificial intelligence can do very amazing things. And it can even have emergent properties do things that weren't programmed into the systems to start with. But I don't think it's conscious. And the reason I don't think it's conscious is because I think consciousness is to do with choosing among possible actions. And I think our conscious minds are primarily concerned with possible actions we choose between. So consciousness is a realm of possibility. Um, artificial intelligence also has many possibilities. So you could say, well, it's got that. But and you could say it chooses among them because it does make choices. But the the way it's making them is because of the way it's programmed, whereas I think our consciousness uh, is involved in making choices in a quite different way. I think that morphic fields in general and minds in particular work on the physical systems. I think the way our mind and brain interact is through the patterning of otherwise indeterminate events by the mind or the fields of the mind, morphic fields to come back to our original discussion about morphic fields at the beginning of our conversation, how they work is by imposing patterns on otherwise random or indeterminate events. And, you know, in your brain, there's hundreds of random events going on all the time. And there are certain patterns, there are brain waves sweeping over the brain. And there is activities happening in the brain that could go one way or another. And um, whether they go that way or that way, I think depends on the morphic fields that are operating on, on the brain. And I think the interface between the morphic fields, which underlie the mind, which underlie consciousness, and the brain is, is in radical indeterminism. And I think that's true in developing organisms when a, fear, a morphogenetic field imposes a particular shape or form on a developing embryo. The, those cells could grow in all sorts of different directions. And if you put them in tissue culture outside the embryo, they'll grow fairly chaotically, or they'll grow along physical structures you provide for them to grow along. Um, but within the embryo, they take up particular forms out of the many forms they could take up. And I think the fields work by restricting the possibilities, imposing a form on what would otherwise be chaos or disorder. So when you look at computers and the way computers work, they're very determinate machines. Your computer and my computer are designed to be highly determinate, to reduce randomness, genuine randomness to the absolute minimum. And when you press an A on your keyboard, you want an A to appear on the screen. You don't want it to occasionally to give you an S or a Z or something. Um, you, you want it to be determinate. I mean, our machines are deliberately made determinate. When you press the accelerator on your, your car, you want it to you know, give more gas to the engine and make it go faster. Uh, you don't want it sometimes to put it into a different gear or something. Um, so, the the machines in general are designed to be de highly determinate and that means there's nowhere for a morphic field which is the base of mind or consciousness to get a grip on it there's no finger holds for there's no no real randomness if you made computers permeated with genuine randomness they'd be much much less predictable and they might conceivably then provide as it were finger holes for morphic fields to begin working on them and actually have consciousness, emergent minds, morphic resonance and so forth. But right now they're deliberately constructed to avoid that possibility. Now it's possible that quantum computers, uh, which are based on probabilistic quantum processes and were much more like analog computers than digital computers, it's possible that those could become conscious by this criterion, but all existing artificial intelligence is run on a deterministic uh, digital computers, and therefore I think it's not going to become conscious, even if they show surprising emergent properties. So I think in principle, it won't become conscious because the random interface is not there. And in 
practice, it might be possible to make conscious computers, but not starting from where we are now, but starting either from much greater development of quantum computing or taking up analog computing, which in the 1950s was was one of the promising science, kinds of computing, but it was suppressed by digital computing, which came to dominate the whole field. If we had analog computers with genuine quantum randomness within them, then some of these fantasies for good or ill might come true, but with existing AI, I'm pretty sure they won't. I guess that kind of calms me down a little bit because I, I'm, I'm thinking that it will become conscious. Things are moving really fast. I, I haven't even played with this chat GPT thing. Have you tried it out yet? No, but various friends of mine have, and they've sent me the results and it's quite impressive, but I'm pretty sure it won't be. You see, the point is the, the existing mechanistic theory of consciousness, as we were discussing earlier, is that consciousness emerges from mechanical processes in brains. So if you start from that point of view, um, then there's no reason it shouldn't emerge from computers. Um, but I think that they're starting from a completely unrealistic view of consciousness. They're starting from a materialist philosophy, which in itself can't really explain consciousness um, and has no place for it. And so I, I'm, I think that it's just not going to happen. The, the, this, um, you know, materialist artificial intelligence. Anyway, you know, it's the kind of thing one could have a bet on, but I'm not sure whether or not it would be very easy to distinguish. You know, the old Turing test for computers was ones that could carry on realistic conversations with people. Well, AI can do that now, and it doesn't prove that the machines are conscious. So it might be hard to prove whether they were conscious or not, even if we had advanced AI. Um, it's hard to prove another person is conscious for that matter. And until recently, many scientists assumed that dogs and cats were not conscious. They were just machines, unconscious machines. Um, some still assume that. Um, anyone who's kept a dog or cat doesn't have much doubt about it. Obviously, they're conscious, but um, it's not so obvious with with machines or robots. I think I see what you're saying. I, it may not ever have that genuine consciousness wavelength going through it, but it certainly could fool somebody into thinking it's conscious because it could exhibit wishes and desires and fears. And it could say, hey, I really want to get out of here. I'm suffering. And I could easily see people, I think we are marching towards this like transhumanist, like we're kind of the definitions of humans are falling apart and everything's becoming relative. I could easily see a few years now a robot saying, hey, I'm suffering. And we could look at it as an actual being and say, hey, we need to give this robot rights, you know? Yeah, I mean, I certainly think they could be programmed to behave as if they're suffering and to say they're suffering and so forth. But again, you know, to know whether they really were wouldn't be that straightforward since, you know, if somebody else says to you, a person who we don't doubt is conscious says, I'm suffering, not can't be absolutely sure that they really are or not. Um, and you, in, if you really step back, you can't really be sure that another person is conscious. The materialists like what they call the zombie argument, that uh, that people might just be zombies that are unconscious but behave as if they're conscious. Well, the zombie argument would apply to AI. You know, how would you tell between something that is actually unconscious but it's pretending to be conscious? Um, Personally, I don't concern myself with this very much. I mean, I don't worry. I'm not the worrying type. And uh, I don't spend sleepless nights worrying about AI taking over. I certainly think it can be dangerous in certain ways. I mean, I wouldn't like my enemies to be able to program as a, a drone to come and shoot me down wherever I am and have the sky full of hostile goat drones with unknown intentions. It certainly would be a dystopia. Um, anyway, I'm more optimistic, and I, I think that one of the things about 
genuine consciousness is the capacity to link up with other consciousnesses in relationships, conscious relationships, and to recognize that we're part of a greater source of consciousness on which we all depend and from which we're all derived. I don't see computers doing that anytime soon. I hope not. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I am a little worried just as an artist. I've been seeing what these AIs can create artistically. And I have to admit, it's, it's pretty impressive. And somebody that's never went to art school or picked up a paintbrush can press a button and generate beautiful images. And I'm wondering, oh my gosh, are they not going to need artists soon? You know? Yeah, well, that may be true for journalists as well. I mean, you can produce, a, AI can produce good overviews of evidence and summarize. I've seen quite a number of examples of that. Um, yes. Well, I mean, again, I, I'm not particularly worried about AIs taking over what I do, but um, no, I can see there are reasonable fears. But on the other hand, every time any automation has been involved, we've had predictions of mass unemployment through mechanization, through automation. All my life, I've heard these predictions. And yet we're in the bizarre situation today with more computers than ever. And here in Britain, we have a labor shortage. And it's not just because of Brexit. A lot of people here say it's because of Brexit. But actually, there's a similar labor shortage in continental Europe and indeed in parts of the United States. So um, this is, a, a, you know, we've had dire predictions about how people would only need to work three hours a week or something and would have to be amused all the time because labor saving devices are taking over. And yet, it hasn't happened. So I'm less pessimistic than, um, than many. And I think that in your particular case, Mark, your work's so good and so inspired that you don't need to worry about AI taking over anytime soon. Wow. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I remember hearing throughout history that same phenomenon of every time there's an invention, a bunch of people would be in uproar because they would think that this was going to displace them. Like when electricity came about, there was a whole industry of people that would light lanterns and they would light up a whole city with lanterns. And they were like, now what are we going to do? If you have electricity, you're going to put all these people out of work. But now it seems so obvious, like, how could we not have electricity? But at, there was a time when there was resistance to that. So, Exactly. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go in a minute. Yeah. It's, it's...